Hello everyone and welcome to the sideboard here at the Dallas Standard Open. I'm here with David Thomas. What's up? Uh, Dave's playing one of the most uh, maligned and most successful archetypes of the Return to Ravnica standard season here, Bant Control. Nothing too crazy or scary, pretty much just reduced list, right? It's, re it, it's, it's not exactly reduced list. There are a couple of changes I made based on what I expected uh, the field to be. Uh, I mean, I, I I loved his original 75 uh, uh, from the Invitational, but there are things I think that had to be changed based on the way the metagame shifted. True. Especially here in Texas, yeah, where everything's more aggressive. Yeah, everything's just crazy. But what we really want to talk about is just I think the role of this deck. I, we may be seeing, saying farewell to it for all we know. Like once Gate Crash comes up, yeah, things I, could change. I think I think once Gate Gate Crash comes out, Esper is gonna probably fully replace his deck. I mean. Uh, the, this deck could still show up because the thra uh, the aspect of having Thrag Dust, but Esper gets uh, uh, the lands at once, and we don't we don't know what other cards have, sure. have shown up. So there are, there are lots of things that could definitely yeah. just change a lot. Uh, the core of the deck has remained basically the same, uh, even down to the Singleton Amass components. A card a lot of people debate over whether or not they want. I know you said you're a fan. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan as long as I'm playing. Augur of Bolas, I like the mass. That's Reed Duke sold it uh, to me the first time he made top eight. Like when he had the split, and I started playing uh, playing with the deck. Okay. Uh, like the mass components kept showing up on the Augur, and if it had been a Jace, like like uh, a lot of people wanted it to be originally, then uh, it would have missed. And uh, that's come up. That came up uh, a lot actually. Sure. And it it dig it digs, and you want it to dig. All right. Uh, I think that this deck can also be said to be responsible for. Jace the memory, memory of that just becoming like a real card, I think, in the format. Like, it started with the one John Yard and Elixir, then to get advantage, you know, you went to a second John Yard as you have here, and then now Jace Wars are like really common in yeah. standard. It's, it, yeah, it, it's so important in the, I guess, the control the control decks that do exist uh, right now. Uh, there aren't very many haymakers. Mo uh, mo a lot, like, in, especially in the Bantmere where you're just drag tusking for thra uh, each other back and forth. You really need something to come down, can be answered, and just uh, can win you the game almost on the, ex almost uh, entirely on the spot. Uh, I think it's even been a strong planeswalker against a lot of the Naya decks, yeah. which have to board out threats to board in more answers for your cards, and then they just find themselves threatened by a Jace really strangely. Yeah, they, you you play you play a slow control game. Uh, and then instead of relying on one creature attacking over and over, you just play the Jace. If you need to, you can draw and, and draw the extra cards. But he, in, a, in like four or five, uh, like four or five turns, you, you just win the game. Yeah. Speaking of creatures, one of the things that makes Bant Control an interesting deck is its reliance on them, as opposed to Esper Control, which runs like three augers and one Snapcaster or something crazy like that. This deck has always run the full amount of Thragtos for defense. Sometimes run Angel. Sometimes run Augur. And then in the sideboard, we have more creatures. I think the discovery of Rock's Faith Mender was one of the things that even made this deck stay successful over the long term. Yeah, it's really important, specifically for like the zombie, uh, the zombie and uh, red deck matchups, because like going Faith Mender, like uh, uh, Farseek into Faith Mender into Thrag Tusk is just so devastating to them. Yeah, like you can just completely blow them out of the water. Then you're setting up for a Sphinx's Revelation for maybe five. They gain you ten life, draw five. That's it's just so devastating to a lot of these aggressive decks. Like they can't. They just can't deal with that uh, that sort of a life swing. And including Silklash Spider, which I think is the man for the job when it comes to defending against Thunder Maw Hulk. Yeah, he's I love him against Thunder Maw <laughs> and uh, and um, Falconrath uh, Aristocrat. Yep, very good there too. I think that Bant's sideboard is actually one of the things I've always liked most about it. The main deck, very strong core, does the same thing. It's really just built to do one exact thing, very consistently. Yeah. Uh, but then in the sideboard, you get to switch in some cards that are really just haymakers in their own matchups. We already talked about Rock's Faith Mender, the Jaces, Rest in Peace against any of the decks yeah. that are Graveyard Reliant. Very strong card. And moving in on these counter spells, getting rid of the actual removal spells against other control decks. Yeah. I think that Bant is one of the most, the decks that can just su successfully transform itself. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a really strong deck. Um, it's it's able to, to not leave... In most games, not leave cards you don't need in mm -hmm. in those matches. It's it's really good to make sure that all the cards you're playing with uh, are good in all the uh, all these matchups. Like that's uh, all the sideboard cards are always going to be good. Like the aggro decks, when, when they have cavern souls, you just board out your dissipates, board in uh, another pile of removal, and you just set up for the long game. Sure. I think that it's really the card draw that makes it yeah. Sphinx, work that way. Sphinx's Revelation is the core of this deck. Without with, without this card, the, uh, this is not a deck. Like uh, as Esper, sure. Esper, Esper could exist uh, without Sphinx's Revelation, but this deck, Bant uh, cannot. You know, I'd never thought of it that way, but yeah, you're right for sure. 
the Esper deck has like lots of ways to actually accrue advantage. It leans on Planeswalkers and Forbidden Alchemy interactions yeah. and stuff like that. But this deck just this is the only spell that does the job. Yeah, right. you like the first Sphinx's Revelation into the second is, is usually where you start to take over the game. Sure. It's, it's just it's such a swing. Well, uh, we've got Gatecrest coming out very very soon, so. This, this might be our last weekend with Man Control as a dominant player in the metagame, so we'll see if it has what it takes to maybe put up one last performance. Right? Maybe. All right, well, thanks for joining us, mm -hmm. David. Thank you. And we'll be back with more Standard.